So today we have this little Whitneyville. This was uh, purchased by me as a 32 rimfire. And uh, hmm, when it showed up, uh, it wasn't 32 rimfire. Uh, it was 30 rimfire. I'd like to say that's the first time that's ever happened, but I'd be lying. Unfortunately, it's a mistake that's been made several times now, and just in my experience. Um, there isn't a lot of difference uh, aesthetically between 32 and 30. Um, so, I mean, when you just look at it and assume, you can get it wrong. And uh, unfortunately, they don't make reloading kits for 30 rimfire. So if you want to do uh, something to shoot this, uh, you're going to have to get creative, like taking 17 uh, Hornet or 22 Hornet, and uh, cutting it and drilling it and using that brass to actually make something that will work in here. Uh, so it can be done, but uh, you can't just go buy something off the shelf to make it work. Uh, anyway, um, as you can see, the finish on this thing's, you know, not, not real great. <laughs> you know, um, there is some nickel left, uh, but there's also some heavy corrosion, corrosion along the barrel and... Uh, Unfortunately, uh, the cylinder, um, it looks like this one was nickeled at some point, um, but uh, the Whitney's uh, quite often had a blued cylinder with a nickeled frame. So uh, in the low res photos uh, that I purchased this with, um, it would have appeared uh, to be blued uh, with maybe some rust, but uh, no, it turns out this is all patina, um, like a rusty brown patina. Uh, there's very little, just little bits of traces of nickel on there. So, uh, yeah, we're going to clean this up and, uh, you know, see what we can do. Uh, it is a nice little pistol mechanically. It's tight. Everything's good. Indexes, locks up, main springs strong. So, uh, it is a really nice little pistol, but, you know, we need to, uh, or well, we don't need to, but... I'm going to clean it up and uh, see if I can give it some of its former beauty back. I also thought it'd be a good time to, uh, you know, show you guys the proper teardown, or at least, you know, how I tear down a pistol, and maybe how they work inside. Almost all of these pistols uh, were essentially the same. I mean, there are differences, but um, the vast majority of them follow the same principle of uh, a little Paul coming off the. Uh, hammer to uh, index the cylinder and a little lever under here to lock and unlock you know and the spur trigger directly engages the hammer um so yeah thought we'd uh, maybe go through a bit of that today so anyway we'll start the tear down and uh, i don't know how this is going to go when it comes to uh, editing the video i may cut little bits of this out, uh, may jump around a bit, um, make for a fairly lengthy video if I uh, include everything. But that screw comes out, that side plate pops off. Now we're into the, uh, the guts of the pistol. And uh, you can see here that, uh, here, let me uh, so get another screwdriver to point with. Okay, so the main spring comes from down here, and it's pushing on the hammer there. That's the hand that indexes the cylinder. And uh, funny enough, oh yeah, <laughs> sorry, I haven't had this apart. I remember the Whitney's now. Sorry, spring is on the inside of the uh, plate. And that spring will keep tension on this hand so that it's always pushing down against uh, the cylinder and as it goes you can see it reaches up it pushes on the back of the cylinder the hammer locks and you can see right here um, I guess it's pretty tiny but that's the uh, top of the spur trigger engaging a notch on the hammer and that's what's holding that Squeeze it, it pulls it down, allowing the hammer to release. There's another notch right here, uh, just ahead of the first one, and that's your half cock. 
That's what allows your cylinder to spin free to load. Doesn't allow it to shoot. Well, I guess on this, I can force it. That might be because I have the side plate off or it just might be worn to the point where uh, it's off. Normally, you're not able to do that. But uh, this may be, yeah, just worn to that point. Uh, keep in mind, you know, these are 140 years old. This has obviously seen a fair bit of use and abuse over the years. Uh, so some of that stuff uh, I just expect, you know. It's not uh, the same as firing uh, or going to the store and buying a new one and trying to fire that. So, yeah, interesting. I don't remember ever having one that pops out. It does take a fair bit of squeezing, though. Anyway... Let's switch it up here. We'll pull the grips off. When you're doing this stuff, you want to make sure you use the appropriate sized quality screwdriver. Um, if you don't, you'll end up damaging the uh, head of the screw. And it's not like you can just go down to the hardware store and find an, a replacement. Uh, these screws are A, slotted, which you almost never find anymore, and B, uh, typically have a thread and uh, size that's going to be unique to the gun. So we really don't want to mess them up. So here we go. There's the mainspring fully exposed. And uh, again, most of these little pocket pistols, regardless of brand, typically have something very similar to this, a long flat spring. And uh, these are prone to breaking, just FYI. Uh, you may have heard me mention it on my channel before, but uh, I've had a couple break now. Um, in the process of uh, figuring out how I'm going to repair, sorry, repair one on the Smoot that I rebuilt. Took all the time to rebuild the uh, Smoot number three, and uh, when I uh, took it out to the range, everything was good. I came back, was going to film a video about my range day, and uh, lo and behold, the spring broke in my hand um, while I was about to film. So it's unfortunate, but uh, you know, it happens. So pop the cylinder out, I'll set this off to the side. I'm going to want to pull the spring out, take tension off of everything. So just pop it out of the little notch and it pops right out. So without tension on it, oops, I can lift that up. There's uh, the little hand for uh, indexing the cylinder. And uh, it's kind of hard to see, but this, that rides against the cylinder and uh or sorry the hammer not the cylinder that rides against the hammer and there's some contours on this hammer and that's what uh controls the cylinder lock down here so as the hammer goes through its rotation back to uh you know from being down to half cock to full cock this will come down and pop back up and of course it engages the little divots in the cylinder itself to lock it up. And we'll pop the trigger out to do that. We're gonna to have to push these pins out and sometimes they can be a problem. Sometimes they're really loose and easy. Other times you need to get a, uh, a punch to actually knock them out. I think this time I'm actually gonna to have to get that punch so we'll pause it here and uh, carry on in a bit. Okay, so I'm back from the garage. Now, I haven't tapped this pin out all the way. I was leaving it in so I could show you guys. It's actually too tight for me to pull out with just my hand. Um, so I sh should have punched it all the way or just grab the pliers and pull it out. But I don't have any in front of me. I did do it enough though that the trigger comes out now. There's a trigger return spring on here. And uh, that's all it is, this little trigger. That right there is the part that engages the hammer. 
and you can see yeah there's some wear on here that's probably why it let go on uh, half cocked again normally that it wouldn't but you know 140 years of use and abuse um, what can I say um, also if you guys have ever watched uh, my video on uh, making springs with hairpins this would be a perfect example of where you'd make a spring with a ballpoint pen or at least one of the ones that clicks to uh, come out take the spring out and cut it down to fit in here it makes a handy trigger return spring because this is another spring that's commonly broken um, a lot of pistols have a v spring in here and uh, that a hair clip will work for quite often not always but usually um, of course this coil spring that hairpin's not going to work so uh, those pens, the springs from the pens tend to work. Maybe I should just show you. You can see when I hold it like this, that's your half cocked. That rotates back, there's your full cocked. Is it something like that? Squeeze the trigger, pops that out, and allows it to rotate forward. Now, I'm probably going to leave it in, just because uh, when I clean this up, I don't see the point in leaving this uh, blued or in the rough. Um, so I'm going to leave this pin in, but uh, you can pop that pin out, and that will take the uh, whole cylinder lock assembly out. Um, not a big deal. There's a little spring in there as well. And that's also the same with... Uh, the cylinder pin release if you pop this pin out you'll be able to take this uh, release out but again I don't see the point in taking it apart um, for that I'd rather clean it up leave it intact it's working mechanically and uh, just as soon uh, maybe re-nickel this whole thing um, just yeah give it a nice nice appearance so for our purposes uh, this is essentially as far as I'm going to take this down uh, about the only thing I'm going to do more is pull that pin right out and uh, yeah then I'll start cleaning this up but anyway I thought I'd start with uh, a teardown video for you guys and uh, I'm sure uh, soon enough I'll have a video of it going back together uh, hopefully looking you know notably better Anyway, I hope you like this. Uh, if you do, please like and subscribe. Um, I want to keep making these, and uh, yeah, I enjoy, enjoy this. Um, so yeah, I'll see you on the next one.